everybody thanks for watching another video so tonight i want to share with you guys some advice about getting into knives because if you're just starting right now it is an amazing time but the problem is there's so many different companies that are all making different types of knives different handles different steels and it can be super intimidating now an easy and great place to start is learning about steel now the people in the industry that do it for a living they know everything about every piece of steel that they have in their inventory they can rattle off each chemical breakdown and tell you what each of those elements do but for our purposes there's really only four types of steel that we got to know and we really only have to know about three elements now I totally understand that this is going to be a overgeneralization of knife steel, but I promise you it's going to get you like 95% of the way there. Now for that other 5%, if you want to look at what vanadium does or even what nitrogen does or phosphorus or silicone, you can look those up, but I guarantee you it's either in there to harden, toughen, uh, wear resistance, edge retention, or make it easier to handle in the annealing process. But we really only have to know three elements. All right, let's start off with the three elements we're going to be looking at, starting off with these two right here, and that's iron and carbon. So both of these together and you get steel. Now, iron is always going to be somewhere in the high 90s, like 97, 98%. Some might even be 96%. But carbon is needed to harden the iron. Just like back in the day when they were messing around with copper and they're like, oh, the stuff is too soft. We need to add something. They discovered that if they added tin, you would get bronze. So now with these two, it's the upgraded version. You get steel. So depending on how much carbon you add to iron, is going to really dictate the use of the steel. And really the only other element we're going to be looking at is chromium, which gives an exceptional level of corrosion resistance to whatever steel you're adding it to. So depending on the percentage of this added to that, it may be considered a stainless or an alloy. Let's have a look. Now, instead of looking at the entire forest of knives, we're only going to be concentrating on these four trees in the forest because these are the four types of steel that we really should be looking at most of the time. And that's carbon, alloy, stainless, and tool steels. Let's start off by having a look at what a carbon steel looks like and what a tool steel looks like. All right, so here we go. We got the high carbon steel on this side, which is 1095, and we got the tool steel on the right side, which is D2 steel. Now, pretty easy, carbon, high carbon stuff. If it's above, I would say 0.45% is going to be high carbon. So 1095 has like 0.90 to 1.0 carbon in it. So that's going to be high carbon. No chromium in here. So not very rust resistant. So for those people that have those survival knives, they keep them really clean or they coat them with something. But those type of knives with high carbon, uh, they rust a lot. Now on the other side, Look at the level of chromium in here. So 12% or maybe like 10, 11, 12% chromium. That's a lot in there. So it's going to be very resistant to rust. Corrosion resistance is great. But look at the level of carbon in here. So this is a very hard steel. So that's what you're going to see in tool steel. It has to be very corrosion resistant and very hard. Now the disadvantages of having a hard knife is it's good because the edge retention is really great but because it's so hard sometimes it can chip and when it chips and it loses its edge because it's so hard it is ridiculously hard to sharpen especially by hand all right let's have a look at some stainless and some alloy so we got the 8 cr14 mov on this side which is the newer version the older one is 13 and we got 5160 on this side again if you look at the chromium it's 13 to 14 percent on the stainless and we all know that stainless is extremely corrosion resistant so if you live in a place like hawaii or you're on water a lot that's something that you want and then the alloy side just a lower level of chromium here just 0 0.70 now an example of Something like HCR 13 or 14 would be the Overland by CRKT. They absolutely love this steel. It's very easy to sharpen. The edge retention is great. Some people don't like it because it's from China, but OS 8 would be the Japanese version. And then Buck Knives. Buck Knives has their new Combat Knives series. This is made of 5160. This thing is going to be a great review. Uh, but those are some just some quick example of knives that are made out of these two. And again, if we just follow chromium and carbon we can see what the steel is supposed to do well all right guys it's that easy you just gotta know four types of steels and keep track of three different elements and you're gonna be on your way guys that is the ending of the video hope you enjoyed it if you liked it please give it the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed to chemo 365 please do remember i'll catch you guys laters